And yeah, that's uh, that's not as funny as RDRR. No, no. But no, it's no. definitely stranger. Yeah, actually, my calculus teacher in tenth grade, he pretty much, he said M K, I think more times than he said any other word, including definite and indefinite articles. Oh, I hate it, especially when there's good teachers that say words over and over. Yeah. Like I had one teacher who would always say in essence. In essence, in essence, in essence. Everything was in essence. I was like, so nothing's for real. It's only in essence the same. I had an English teacher who said quintessential at least twice a day. Twice a day isn't so bad. I'm talking about like constantly. The MK guy was terrible because he'd say it like MK, and he'd expect some sort of response like, yeah, and then he'd keep going. But if no one said anything, he would quite literally stand in front of the classroom going, MK, MK, all right, MK. Okay, and then he'd move on, like he'd get stuck. Some people got these problems. Yeah. Can science explain them? Probably. Maybe they should. We should get a scientist in. You know, I'm actually pretty sure that, you know, some of those problems like uh, ADD and such, like, I'm not a super expert, but at least from the few things I've read, there's no gene for ADD, there's no virus, there's no bacteria. There's no chemical. Well, I think the problem here is more simply that I believe ADD is something that does exist and can affect people. I do believe, however, that it is wildly overdiagnosed and that many people who are told they have ADD are just, you know, kids. Oh, my God. Ah, maybe if we let him play on proper playgrounds. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, when we were kids, we were already complaining about the decline of the playground. Because when we were kids, they were taking away the seesaws, and they were taking away the merry-go-rounds. Actually, you know, I had it pretty good. Um, at my elementary school, there, was, there were three playgrounds. And when I was in kindergarten, there was the old playground, and then there was the, the big toys, which is the new playground. Ah. The old playground consisted of some old-style swings, two long chains with a rubber seat. A sandbox, uh, a spinny thing, two wooden splintery seesaws with metal handles, Ooh. and this big square tower thing. It was a square tower, and you climbed up it various ways. It was just a big, freaking tall rectangle structure. At the top, you could stand up there, and there was a railing, and there was a slide from up there to get down. Uh-huh. Uh, this thing was like at least 10 feet tall. It was pretty tall. Then the big toys was a big wooden thing, and they had... The, the tires and the tube and a swirly plastic slide and some chains to climb up. And Those a plastic net. slides were the worst things ever because they the were like The plastic van- slide was fun no, and we got to go. They were a Van de Graaff generator. You'd go down that thing. And oh, then, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but they were still fun to go down. Remember one time I got, I slid down one and I went to stand up and I brushed my arm against a little like metal thing, like a little screw. And it shocked my arm so hard my arm was numb. And I went crying to my mom and I couldn't explain what happened. Yeah, but when we were little kids, the little, the swirly yellow slide was still pretty good. Now, as big kids, we need the uh, long metal slides to get any fun. Yeah. Or the carny slides. But they're all going away. They I are. I mean, think about it. When we were kids, they were taking away the seesaws and all that stuff. I saw a few days ago, they're taking away swings now because swings are too dangerous. So if there's going to be no moving parts, what's what's the fun? You could just... They're also taking away sandboxes because animals might do things in them. You could use that white sand. Eh. Animals might do things on anything. (laughs) (laughs) They might just pee on the kids. I've seen kids peeing on stuff, so. Oh, my God. I remember nursery school. Some kid was peeing in the back of the nursery school playground, and I told on him. Whoa. One time (laughs) when I was in second grade, and I was in a Catholic school, and there was this kid named Pierre. He had problems. Was he French? No, he was not French. Then why was his name Pierre? His name was Pierre. <laughs> what the hell are those all parents right. thinking? So anyway, one day, we're Kids all gonna in get class, picked on. and he just peed. In class? He just sat there, and he just unzipped and peed. Wait, wait he unzipped? Desk. He unzipped and peed. He was sitting in his desk, and he just peed. Where did he pee? Did he just go on the floor? Just went on the floor and started, because the classroom was kind of slanted, and started making his way toward the front of the room. And the teacher <laughs> looked, <laughs> What the about teacher, the other kids? Who was a nun, looks... And says, who's got a drink? And no one says anything. And then everyone's looking. And we all real. everyone realizes at this point what has happened. <laughs> I never heard this story. And no one wants to react to it. 
because no one's sure what to do. We're all second graders. We didn't even think to laugh because this was just too weird. Second grade. Holy crap. Second grade. Holy crap. And uh, it was, you know, this was back before, you know, it would have been a biohazard because, you know, it wasn't, I was. It's not a biohazard. It's it sterile. Now, it's sterile. You realize now, if you get a tooth pulled by the dentist, you're not allowed to take it home in a lot of places because it's a biohazard. I took it home. So you know what the nun did? Mm. She uh, made him get some paper towels and clean up his pee. And then we went back on with the lesson. Sounds about right. Yeah. She hit him, too, with the ruler a couple times. That's not so right. I was a Catholic school. They hit us. They hit me a lot. Because I was a smart ass. I would have hit back. I didn't hit back. I would have hit back. Because I'd always ask questions about science, and they'd give me God answers. And I'd ask for science answers, and then they'd hit me. I always read stories. You ever read They Cage the Animals at Night? No. It's basically this guy's autobiography of his childhood. This is a sequel. And it's actually pretty sad, because like, his mom is all screwed up in traction all the time, and his brothers don't care for him, and he's always in, like... Uh, you know, foster houses and things, and it's terrible, and, you know, his life pretty much sucked as a child. Uh-huh. And he came to my middle school once and told us about it after we read it, and he cried, whatever, you know, put on a show, <laughs> I think. But, you know, it's true, basically. Well, one of the things is he's always in Catholic places where nuns would hit him a lot, you know? And I was always just like, you never hit back. You can't really, you know, get, you get my sympathy for some stuff, but not for that. Yeah. It's hard to hit back, because remember, when you're when you're in second grade, you're a little kid. So? Those nuns are tall. They're strong. They're stronger than you They're think. old ladies. Nah, if they weren't put, all old ladies. If you push one over, they'll break their hip and you're, you win. Actually, some of them are pretty young. If they're young, why are they hitting kids? They're not mean old ladies. Because they're mean nuns. You're mean and young? I had young? a nice nun. There was one real nice nun who gave me some gerbils. Gerbils? Yeah, she had gerbils and she gave me a couple. Uh-huh. I How could mine. you? I can't imagine like like a twenty, thirty year old nun hitting kids. That yeah, one nun, she was old, but she used a metal ruler. Everyone else used wooden rulers, and when she hit with that metal ruler, that was end game. Uh, maybe it's because she was so old, she needed the metal one to, uh, sp- you know, spice it up. Yeah, I only ever saw her actually hit a kid once, and the kid kind of deserved it. You know, kids do deserve a hitting sometimes, but um, I don't think. You know, I don't think the nuns should be the... doling it out. Yeah. You know, actually, you know, the Singapore hitting is a little too hard. I'm kind of an advocate of caning because see, the more I see people doing stupid things, it'd be a great way to solve problems. If someone was stupid, if you just whacked them and said, hey, no. See, the thing is, it's like, it's not really cruel or unusual. I mean, the, the caning they do is a little cruel because a little yeah. too much. But seriously, if someone, let's say someone robbed a convenience store, instead of locking them up in prison where they'll come out and just, you know, not change their mind or anything. Or if anything, they'll learn how to rob one better from the people who are already yeah. in there. If you just whack them, right? Just not caning, but like uh, whipping or something, something like between spanking and caning. Or just humiliate them, just a good spanking. Spanking's good. The just judge gotta, himself does it. And with then a let giant him go. paddle, a paddle. Paddling, oh. paddling is good. Paddling of the swollen ass. <laughs> that's that's how we get them. Right? It'll be so much cheaper, you know. And people, you know, won't... why this won't happen? Because we do have the whole, uh, you know, prison industrial complex going in the U.S. nowadays. But the prison doesn't make us money; it loses us money. Yeah, but the thing is, the prison exists. The prison system is huge. Yep. And a lot of people work for it. Everyone who works for the prison system has a vested interest in it well, still being there. Well, we would still there. need prisons, I mean, for, like, crazy Not murders. as many as we do. You realize how many people are incarcerated in the United States? We have one of Tons. the highest per capita rates. I think the highest. Yeah, we have more people in prison per capita than, than China. Aus- than than Austra- communist, oppressive China. We have more than Australia, which was a prison colony. Well, isn't Australia 100%? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Even though we want to go there and they just won't let us. You know, I think we got a topic for uh, a Friday coming up, the prison industrial complex. Prison industrial complex? Because it's uh, something I... We totally lost science. Yeah, we lost science, but we couldn't talk about science. We'll have to come up with a way to talk science. I think we do have a problem of microphone close to the mouth, a little less far from the mouth, and you can see it on the wave getting bigger and smaller. Well, we'll see if anyone complains when they listen to this. I'm sure they will. wonder if anyone's still listening this far into it, because we got on off on a tangent. Yeah... Hey, uh, Alex, Pete, if you uh, hear this right now... <laughs> it's no good. Uh, say something. That's no good. Eh. 
We won't do that. We won't make a habit of that. But this podcast kind of went 